I am a huge proponent of law enforcement uh, in general. I support law enforcement. I, I thank them for doing their jobs every day. That doesn't mean they all do a good job. It doesn't mean they all should have a badge. Uh, there are a lot of, of people walking around with a badge and a gun that should have neither. And there are those that do things uh, under that, that flag that uh, embarrass the hundreds of thousands of men and women who wear the uniform, and, and that's too bad, and there's no excuse for it. We need to do a better job of selecting and monitoring. And when something happens like this, shame on them. No question about it. Uh, Terrell says the police were threatening him, telling him he was going to die in jail for raping a woman. He didn't even know, never met, never seen, never encountered. DNA science was well established at this point. You have evidence as to whether he was there or whether he wasn't. And they had this before trial. Uh, and yet still with this confession, uh, which... and. You know, all of you sitting there right now are probably thinking, there's no way I would confess to a crime that I didn't uh, commit. But I can tell you, when, particularly when you're young and you're isolated and you have authority figures uh, that are threatening you, and particularly those that are saying, you, know, you go forward with this, you can get life. You could get the death penalty. You could get all of these horrible things. Or you could do this and you at least have a chance to take another breath of free air someday in your life. Uh, I mean, it's, it's like a, a coin toss and you're thinking, well, I, <laughs> it, it, that's tough, particularly when you don't have resources. And Terrell says his DNA evidence wasn't given in court just his false confessions. There's DNA evidence that is really exculpatory and is not given in court. How is that possible? These cases are so often train wrecks, right from start to finish. You've got deceptive interrogation techniques being used on isolated children. You've got lawyers who don't know how to defend these cases, right? You've got sometimes defense lawyers who say, well, my client confessed, I don't know what to do. But in this case and in so many of these other cases, there is rock solid forensic evidence. We know of hundreds of cases of confessions that have been proven false with DNA. This is still going on today because these techniques that Terrell is describing and that were used on Brendan Dassey and so many others, those techniques are still being taught way too often today. Was there a jury trial? No, I, I took a bench trial. Um, and yeah. you got how many years? I, re I received 30, 36 years. What did you say to yourself? When I received the time, I, I was already numb from when I got found guilty because I got found guilty like two months before and then I was going to receive my time. I was still numb from being found guilty for a crime I didn't commit. And how were you finally exonerated? Uh, through the DNA evidence that was there, we were finally able to get that tested to see whose DNA it was. Because back in 96, it was just preliminary DNA testing where you can only test our source and then the, the, the victim or whatever, uh, or the uh, assailant. But in, I wanna say 20, 20, 2008, they started the CODIS data bank where they started right. storing the uh, convicted criminal's uh, DNA to see if, you know, they have, if their DNA matches to uh, another crime. And the DNA that was actually at the scene, we fought in court to get that DNA actually tested. And it took almost a year to it get it It took passed, almost a right? year and a half to get it tested and we, we won that and found out we finally got a DNA match. Wow. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.